Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details. The information contained within this podcast does not consider your personal circumstances and is of a general nature only. You should not act on it without first obtaining professional financial advice specific to your circumstances. Paul Atherton is an ex-Wall Street advisor on a mission to help young people win back their financial power, wealth and security. He does this by helping them understand the hidden world of finance, risk and investments, helps them figure out how it impacts them and to seize the opportunities to make it work to their advantage. This is Paul Street Journal. I'm here this morning with Paul Atherton. How are you, Paul? I'm really good, Tim. That's good to hear. Now, I'm a young person. I attend a lot of young parties and I must say that if I ever bring up finances it's definitely not the cool topic at the at the oh, table so anyway. I'm wondering how can I convince my fellow millennials or young people to invest yeah investing when you're young it's a yeah it's not the most sexy topic I guess uh, but it's incredibly important I, I I did a little bit of a back of the envelope calculation the other day and over a 20-year period the difference between somebody who's actively and intelligently investing, which over 20 years is a pretty good period of time, right? So you're 20 and 20 years, you're 40. Well, that's 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 going to happen, you know, irrespective of something very bad happening. But uh, so what's the difference? The difference between two investors, one that's even investing very, let's say, putting aside a little bit of money, um, but in a very um, low risk account, though somebody else is doing it actively, maybe um, more market orientated, more like the S&P and returns on the S&P. The differences in outcome by the time you're 40 is measured in the hundreds of thousands. So just really roughly, I worked out that the individual A with very low levels of risk undertaking was around 300,000 and um, the other person that took on S and P level was around nine hundred and fifty thousand. So we're talking huge. I mean, the ma- it's just massive. Now think about the person that hasn't even put anything aside. Yeah. So we yeah. got one on one side who's got nine hundred thousand and or maybe a million. Let's say just a million, just round figures. And then on the other, we've got nothing. So it's pretty important. And it does beg the question: Is why why don't we do it when we're young? So I like to think there's sort of five main drivers and. It's good to understand what the drivers are, why you don't do it, and then to see if you recognize any of these, and then perhaps you can do something about it. So I think at the beginning is number one would be your focus. You know, you're just starting out when you're young. You're just starting your career. And where would your focus be? Your focus and your energy is on your income, on the way that you're spending, the way that you're earning your money, the way that you know, you're dealing with your career and its career development. So you're investing really in the here and now. You want to, it's far more important to you and it has far more impact for you to get a raise now than it does for, for investing in 20, for 20 years. And so, so it's, it's just that sort of focus, I think. So that's, that's one. Now it's very important to know that the difference again is measured in the multi hundreds of thousands. So it, you may, realize that, oh, yes, I've got an immediate benefit, but the longer-term benefits of investing will be just significant. So the second reason, I think, is the time and energy it takes. You know, it requires a lot of personal focus, at least at the start. You know, once it's set up, it doesn't take much at all. But at the beginning, it takes a lot of energy and focus, you know. And guess where your energy and focus is? Well, it's on your job and your new career and your new life and... I think um, asking that of young people is pretty tough, you know, because you, know, you, you just got a lot of, you know, pressures to 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 be um, looking at various things from your career and your personal life, and so much going on. So, so I think time and energy is a big, big, um, big source of that uh, reason for the lack of focus. The third one is um, I think it. I think when people tell you to invest and put your money aside, it really feels like control. And it shouldn't, but it really does feel that way. Because, look, you, you've just graduated. Let's so say you got out of college, you've just got out of university, you've just spent all your life at school, 
at university and you've had to do assignments and you've been marked and the teachers tell you to do this, your professors tell you to do that, you must turn up on time, you've got to go to class on time, and all of a sudden you're released into the workforce and of course you've got to do your job, but it's very freeing. And not only are they you know, doing this work now, you're getting paid for doing it. And then somebody says, right, okay, now you need to start doing it. It really feels like somebody's trying to control you. And really what you're looking for is freedom. But it's important to think that this is your control. This is not somebody else's and that this is you taking control over your destiny. That's pretty tough, I think, when you first get into the workforce. So the, uh, the fourth reason is it's a knowledge gap. Now, a lot of people say, well, I just don't know money. I just, I'm just not an expert. Well, yeah, I get that. And I think it's important to have a level of knowledge when you're investing and have a level of understanding. But here's the thing. This happens, this knowledge is built over time. And it's a knowledge that is built by doing it. And you can get help. You know, here Google is your friend. Look up and just find information. Um, and clearly, if you're a regular listener to this podcast, you are getting your knowledge up. And that's that's part of what, you know, my my whole ethos is, is to help people and bridge that knowledge gap. So I think knowledge is a big impediment, but it should be your, it should be your friend and it should be on your side to, to start to start developing a, a program for investing. And the last one is uh, fifth on my list is logistics and mechanics. So you know, this is a classic because I'm a big believer in this, that investing is 20% knowledge and it's 80% logistics. What do I mean by that? Well, you might say, I want to invest in Apple, or I might want to invest on the S&P 500, or I might like to invest in Google, or whatever. But what are the logistics? How do you do that? How do you set up an account? Where do you put the money? How do you put a buy order in? Who do you put the buy order in with? Where is that money held? How do I know if it's going up? How do I know? You know, this is all logistics. This is mechanics. This is the process of investing. And at the beginning, it seems incredibly difficult. And I had a a guy call me up recently and he asked me, look, you know, I've inherited these stocks and I've had them for now 10, 15 years and I've just, you know, collected regular checks, but I want to sell it. But he had no idea how to do it. We didn't know because it, it was logistics. And we went through the process, okay? I said, like, well, who holds them and where do you think it is? Anyway, long story short, we got it sold for him. It was very easy, but the impediment for him wasn't a knowledge problem. It wasn't a lack of, you know, desire. It was he didn't know the mechanics of it, and that was it. So we went through that. But So there you go. So I think there are five reasons, five drivers for it. If you recognize any of those, really, I think it's important to, to take that head on. And not be discouraged, not be discouraged by a lack of knowledge, not be discouraged by a lack of, I don't understand the mechanics and don't be held back because it feels like control because you are the one who's taking control. And yes, it will take energy, but all good things take time and energy. And the payoff, I just can't emphasize this enough, is measured in the multi hundreds of thousands, potentially millions. So do it when you're young. And again, Tim, as you know, my engagement is with young people because I know this is where the biggest impact is. So for all those listening, get in and start working now. Now, there's another thing too. You could always get some help. You know, I was always say there are some really good advisors out there. There's some people with a lot of good knowledge. And so people can help you through this and get you on the, the, the ladder of investing early. So there it is, Tim. Well, it's definitely a good reason. I feel very armed to perhaps convince some of my friends. Thank you for that, Paul. Cheers, Tim. Thank you. Paul Street Journal. Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning OzCast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free. And you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details.